so welcome back guys to our docker tutorial so uh, now we are really gonna get our hands dirty and we're gonna begin with installing dockers in our machine and then we're gonna use uh, Visual Studio Code as our editor to make this application because I really like like it and I hope most of you are familiar with it so let's dive deep into it and let's start talk about getting docker so you can uh, use this link if you're on Windows then you can get simply a very simple basic installation for docker community edition docker docker ce I will paste this link in the description so you guys can see it and here you'll come and just say get docker and you can get the docker so if you're on Ubuntu version uh, you guys can uh, come to this link and down here you will come and this is where you should start from so to able to get update and there is uh, this package that you have to install some certificates in it then you have to uh, check the gpg key for the docker and fingerprint and finally you can just get and install your docker and then you can try using it so uh, I would recommend if you have installed docker then you should be able to uh, run something like docker or it should be visible or you can just test by saying docker container ps it will list you all the containers don't worry about this it, this command should just work and it shouldn't just display an error for you if it just shows nothing then it's fine your docker is running so I will just give you a small brief view about uh, my docker version so I'm using Docker Desktop, which is for Windows version, of course, Windows 10, and its version engine version is 18.09, and my Kubernetes version, which is really important, it's v1.10.11. So you can see that these are my versions. So this is what I will be using throughout the video to uh, develop my application, which shouldn't be a problem for you if you're probably they will not make a huge change that it will be relatively very similar to what we're going to do here. So for development, I'm going to use uh, Visual Studio Code here. So um, here, let's start. Uh, let's really start about doing, getting all these things and hands dirty into all development. So the first thing that I would like to do here is to, I will just create a folder in this and I'm going to call that folder as my backend. And basically, you can just say I want to have a separation between my Node.js front end and Node.js back end, and so on. You know, and back end will have our database and all those kind of things, which are just back end. We can also develop an API on the back end, and on the front end, we can just access that API. And uh, just sort of a decoupling is nice these days. So, and uh, we can create another folder called front end. Oh, I'm sorry, it's created within it, so I will delete it. And actually, it is supposed to be made here. And this is my front end folder. So, but first, I'm going to start by building our backend file. So, as you get familiar with, we can just, you can also create service.js or app.js or any kind of just simple file. And uh, here, I will come a bit later. So the first thing is that if you have a node installed, there are two things. If you have a node installed, you have one option is to build your node application here and then copy the contents of that application into your container and simply run from it. Second way is that you can completely define or tell Docker containers to just Docker image, sorry, to just take your files, download whatever you want to do, all your packages, node models, everything, and you can contain in there and it will not be present on. For that, you don't really need to install node on your local machine. You know, you can just use Docker and you have the whole access to all system and working application, right? So let's get to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to install or I'm not going to use node models for my local folder here. I'm just going to use container completely to develop this node application. So <clears throat> I'm just going to write a few things a bit earlier. As I told you, we're going to use express uh, framework. So let's require uh, express from the node.js and down there we can say our express or app this will be my app object main server file server object to be honest and 
that's going to say okay instantiate my Express app and uh, that's it that's pretty much your service made that's what I love about node.js <laughs> you know it's great and simple and lightweight here you can say app dot um, listen I'm gonna tell it to listen on a port for example 407 just a random number that came to my mind and then I can define uh, default routes uh, like this just to say okay just to show that this is my containerized uh, backend okay so app dot get sorry as it's going to be my get request so I'm gonna say app got get at the entry point for the server so I'm just gonna send back a response to the browser that's gonna say whoa that's uh, that's my containerized node dot yes backend right so I'm just a bit excited about it I'm always gonna get excited about coding so server entry point let's be a nice coder and write some uh, commands pretty nicely to just uh, help the next developer. Also, this project will be available on GitHub, so you can benefit from it. Okay, now let us come to the actual Docker magic now. Okay, so in our backend folder, the first thing that I'm going to consider is that my first uh, microservice will be my backend service, like not jazz okay and then it will be a front-end application will be hosted in a totally different container on a different pod in my application and uh, i can have more microservices associated to it for example something that is synchronizing my application's data with not a database with an external source or it is exposing my application to another external source and something like this any kind of web services which can also be contained in a different one so I intend to have a one Docker file for my uh, simple backend file, right? So now this is really interesting, okay? Now what is a Docker file? There are going to be, well, basically let's start. There are simple things that we're going to talk about. One is going to be Docker file and second is going to be Docker compose file. And I think if you can write that, then that's about it for your Docker. You know, that's it. <laughs> but the concept is important. Writing Dockers is really easy. So here I have this application. Remember, I want to keep this in a node application, right? Now what a Docker file says. Docker file talks about, okay, this is the set of instructions. You know, I have a set of instructions and I want to run my application into this set of instructions. When a container is started, and it is just instruction to the container to how to build an image. This is what exactly what a Docker file does. Nothing more than that. If you don't understand, just wait. Let's get to it, and I will give you an example. In fact, we'll implement that, and then you will be able to understand a bit better. So the first thing that I want to say to my uh, a uh, Docker file is that okay? Since it's a Node app, so let's get a Node image, okay? And I told you as in a previous video about Docker Hub, I use Alpine. It's a lightweight image uh, for my containerized applications. So I can say okay, uh, Node colon Alpine, okay. So as you can see from base image, your base image is going to be Node, and that's going to be your tag, right? Uh, it can be latest, the latest image or not that's present on Docker Hub, you can take it as well. So this is really important, okay? So then you can okay, you can also get Ubuntu here and many things, just whatever you want to get. That's really the base of it, okay? So then you can come here and on the next I can say, okay, my working directory will be user slash src slash app. Uh, what I mean by this, this is my working directory in a container. So if you guys know what bash is or your Linux Alpine, then this is just basically a bash address, right? USR, USR user slash src slash app. This is going to be my current directory. I'm just gonna tell it this will be my containers working directory, right? So then we can say, okay, which is basically just a new thing. As we were using Express 
framework remember here. So of course for a node application we need to tell Docker to install uh, an express uh, framework. So I can say okay run npm install run will basically run a command as you can see here run command and its parameters right so i can say express and save it to my node modules and you can say i'm sorry you can tell it to say okay and after you're done with it just run npm install now npm install is going to just install the application into the image, okay, and it's into the container, right? So that's done. Now we can say copy my source to the uh, containers as a destination. So the first argument here is a source, which is this folder, this backend folder where your Docker file is contained. And this dot is basically a relative part to your current location where your Docker file is placed, right? So that's a really important concept. Then the second argument will be your destination, which is Docker. And remember, what will be our destination? Our working directory in containers, right? So then uh, we can say um, you should expose the port 4007 for me uh, for this particular application, right? Then lastly, I think that's that's about it. That's we are really done with our Docker file. You know, that's almost it. So we can say, okay, once you're done, I'm going to ask you to please run. Uh, node and its parameters would be app and I'm sure if you guys know about node.js you are familiar with what this means okay you can also uh, write npm start here but then in the start script you need to define your uh, in the package.json you need to define your start script so Right now, I just want to keep it simple. So I'll say, please note, go ahead and please run my app.js file as a server. Okay, so now is the magic time. Our Docker file is written and our app.js is here. And I'm saying 4007 here. So let's get the terminal, a uh, new terminal. Okay. So I'll just check what containers do I have running right now. Oh, lots of them. So <clears throat> I'm going to say that, uh, see, I'm in this directory, right? And my Docker file is not in the current, directory. it's in backend or frontend, right? So I want to go to backend. I'm going to see, oh, there's a Docker file present there. So let's tell Docker to build that file, right? Uh, now, what is this going to do? It's going to take that Docker file and it's going to build an image for you for it. Now, remember in the previous tutorial series where I showed you and we talked a little bit about images, right? So we can say this part right here, this is what is going to be built with Docker uh, build that. That means that go to the current directory, okay, and take Docker file and read through it and get me an image. Now, what an image will contain? It will contain your node, your source code, and everything, right? So I'm gonna hit that. And as you can see, this is sending build context to Docker Daemon. What is Docker Daemon? Remember, guys, this is your Docker Daemon, and this is what you are. This is my terminal clients, and uh, here it tells you. Let me read through it. Working directory set to USR SRC app and run npm install express. It's ex express and this is your node logs. You probably know about it. Then it's saying, oh, the container is made and all those things. Pod exposed and now it has run. So it tells you, okay, your image is successfully built with an ID. And this is your ID for the image. So this is really a command which you're going to use every day. I'm going to see what Docker images do I have right so there is an image on top of it which is with id 7 ea 7b35 whatever okay it was built 37 37 seconds ago 
right? Now, why it was able to build so quickly? Because I already had an Alpine image running here. There, node Alpine image, right? It was, I already had that running. So that's why it didn't take much longer. Otherwise it's gonna download some Alpine image. It might take a bit longer than this. And if you have a big library that you're using from Docker registry, like have that Docker's in, it's gonna have a lot of more things download, but it sometimes takes time, but it's just a one-time thing because when once your image is built, you can just make changes to your code and build your container from it. It's not gonna build every image again. So that's the best part about Docker, right? So if you guys notice that what I did, I just have a dot complete node.js application installation into my app into my computer without even installing node, right? I didn't install node in my app computer. I just took a Docker file, wrote some instructions, and I installed it, right? So the next part is to make a container out of our image, right? That's my container, okay? So I really want to build a container out of it. So what you are going to say about it, okay, that is my container. And right now, if I show you, there is no container that is being built on the image that we were talking about, right? And it's just my old containers or containers that is running. So ignore them. We can say Docker run. Okay, this will run your image as in a container minus p. This is basically defined your exposing ports, right? I want to say please expose port 4007 from 4007. Now this is really interesting. You can also say 4004 here, and your application will be shown on 4004, whether your uh, app.js is exposed on 4007 or anything, it doesn't matter. You can also do that. This is really an interesting part of Docker's as well. So you can do that and here you will say, now what you need to tell it. You can have to tell Docker run, which image to run, right? Here you need to specify the image ID which you want to run. So I will go up a little bit. I will take my image ID and I will paste here. Just that, right? Now it should start my container. Let's hope it does. Here we go. And I think my container is started. I'm gonna go to my browser. I'm going to say localhost 4007. I think I ran it on 4007 or the channel oh, 4004, right? So I'm gonna say perfect. See, the application is showing you. Wow, that's my container. I know this application. That's about it. You didn't even install no, you didn't have to set up any servers or anything. You just wrote one file, you wrote a Docker file. In this video, we have a complete running application. Now you can do anything with it, just about anything. But it is always better to have an express or all these things into your backend folder in a notebook folder with installing into your node. And usually it's recommended that you can just use normal local host to create your application, then you can containerize it. It's, but everybody has their own approaches. So that's really great. Now in the next video, I'm gonna talk about Docker Compose, how to compose different micros, microservices, right? Right now it's just a Docker file that's running your image and that's about it so see you in the next video guys have a nice day